Academic Symposium. Uh, and I'd like to start off by talking about some of my graphic design projects. Uh, here we have the Wish You Were Here uh, assignment, which was something where I had to actually take like a ornamental handwritten kind of font that I made and I converted it to a image like you have here. Um, so the main goal behind that was just to give some kind of expressive feeling towards uh, the font choice that I had there. And so that one was rather interesting. These two right here, they are more recent. It's something I did in this design for change class um, to tell you about that. Uh, the Olson Family Foundation is a foundation that was made uh, last March, I do believe. Uh, so essentially what they stand for is, you know, funding children uh, who are victims of gun violence. And so I worked with them, got to collaborate with them quite a bit and be able to have these opportunities here. Uh, the neat thing about this, this cleat design here was made for the My Cause, My Cleats event, which was something that was to be pitched to the NFL, which uh, they have connections to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And so we, were, we had high hopes for that. Um, not entirely clear of whether or not they truly submitted it uh, to them yet, but they said they were going to have that within next November, I believe that's when they hold it. Uh, yeah, so we also have the golf tournament poster that was for a fundraiser. Uh, that one was supposed to have taken place like this spring. Um, however, I think they had it moved, so some of the information changed and it took more, it took place in Florida where the organization was really prevalent. And so here we have this book cover design that I made. Uh, that was, I believe, my sophomore year. And it was just a recover that I had made of the C.S. Lewis series, uh, Paralandra. And over here, these are a few of my posters that I made. Um, these two in particular were something that I had shown before in the past academic symposiums. Uh, so the main thing about this was just the intricate ticket design. Uh, I had to make sure that everything was in a perfect kind of balance and there was flow to this information here in the top right corner and the top left, all the way down to where the seating and entry codes are. And of course down here we have the Turn Your Life Around poster, which was something that was used by the Adams County Courthouse uh, just to give a alternative to prison, just so they can know more about that. And yeah, so over here we have the vote poster, which was a project I did last semester, which was rather interesting how I did that. I actually uh, drew that by hand, like the vote sign. It was kind of like a graffiti design that I thought would just be a nice aesthetic to use. Um, then I applied all of that to Photoshop and was able to get the brick kind of layout. Mm -hmm. And over here, this is kind of more or less of an example of my growth over the years. Uh, because I think now if I were to go back to this particular poster, I would change the white font that I have here because the way that this grid kind of goes down, it has like little areas where it's lighter. And I thought it would just be kind of good to compare like from this poster to this one. Um, just the awareness of certain things like that. And if you come on over here, we have the uh, senior seminar project that I've been working on all last semester. Um, this one was basically about having like a hypothetical business or something. Uh, in my case, I chose to have like a metal band. And so the whole idea was to have like marketing and branding and all sorts of uh, 
nice designs for all of them just to make it seem real and yeah, just to really showcase what I can do with my graphic design skills yeah so we have guitar decals we have guitar picks billboard designs we have bus uh, tour bus decals I guess that's what you could call it uh, as well as a few ticket designs and an album cover uh, the neat thing about the album cover was that was something I did entirely that I illustrated on Photoshop. Um, it's based on like an old sketch that I had of some kind of robot that was like a wolf. So I thought it would fit the theme of this band name, and yeah, I thought that would be a good one to use. And over here we have this comic book type of thing. This one was a little more recent and. The whole purpose of it was to be a zine. I don't know if you've ever heard of those before, but a zine is uh, basically like a comic book or a magazine that's easily produced and a little more like sketches. Uh, so I thought it would be a fun idea to include that in this show because you know, I'm interested in illustration and many types of things of that. Yeah. And if you can see here, I believe this might be in the way a little bit. Let me just move that. We have the candy company design. Uh, so essentially what we were doing here was having like packaging design to replicate that of a uh, candy company, I guess. And so as far as the packaging goes, I wanted to make sure that each of these kind of stood out in their own way. Uh, yeah, so I have all like the calories and nutrition facts and all of that. And these are actually up to scale based on things that were actually made by my mother. Like these treats here, we have the chocolate chip moon clusters here. That's just like a cookie bar and basically like just like this little rectangular shape that would fit in there. And this uh, chocolate oats and peanut butter type of cookie things. So I thought those would be pretty good to have something demonstrated for that as if it were a real uh, product. And same for the cosmic pretzels. Oh, I can't forget this. They have the uh, 3D design class. I had made these two little sculptures here. Uh, this one is the snow fox, which is something I made uh, Purely just kind of out of coincidence, it wasn't really what I was intending, and the accident kind of turned itself into that, and eventually I carved and unveiled this entire creature out of it, and it was based heavily upon um, kind of like dolphins and, of course, foxes, you know, diving, jumping into the air and having some kind of movement and motion to it. It's kind of fluid and something I could also use to keep the animal standing. And for this right here, we have the Deny the Cube project. Uh, for that one, you can see the background on this. I do believe I have that background based on a picture that's over there, Chalk Pastel. Uh, yeah, but for the most part, with this particular design of it was just to create the illusion that this is not a cube. And kind of on the back side, you'd be able to see if I were to like open up the case and flip it over, that there would be like these little lines and strange little designs here on the back of it uh, that would kind of create the illusion that it's bumpy or wavy and kind of like a cloth material. Uh, yeah, and over here, if we look in the shadow box, you get a good look at it. Yeah, so this was also something I did in Professor Moss's uh, 3D design class. This is a mixed media kind of project that was a uh, relief type of sculpture. And most of these were just found objects, pieces of rope, random fibers, and I do believe I also used some clay cotton. Obviously uh, got some soda can 
tabs. And yeah, so that one was a great experience to have made. Um, a lot of this is actually, like you can see here, that there's like this net. It's like this chicken wire mesh that I had used in the background to kind of add some more texture to it, give it kind of a grid effect, and that worked out quite well. And over here we have the portrait that I had made of myself that was more abstract in design. Uh, the overall idea was to kind of, you know, play with color a little bit and kind of replicate something like that you would see in a video game or 3D software where you would have like a model or something with all of these polygons and different shapes. And overall, I used the color to just kind of mess around with the lighting, which is more or less replicated here on the shoulder and the sides of the face. And over here we have the, I believe it was the linotype, or I can't, oh, the linoleum print, that's what that is. And, and a whole, like cutting out little pieces with the lighter colors for that, uh, covering up the same piece of paper with different layers of ink. And so that's how that whole image was made up. And then we stuck it through a rolling press and, you know, basically it just kind of flattened out onto the paper. And we get that nice image that we have there. This is a, there's another uh, painting right here with Loki again. That is the name of my cat. Uh, this is just like a four panel thing that I had done in Professor Major's uh, 2D design class. Uh, and the idea was just to be able to focus on like desaturating and oversaturating images as well as inverting them as opposed to its prime stage that it would be right here. And that was overall just to play with the color and see how each of that changes. Um, this one well, I'm more proud of this one. Uh, this was more recently that I had done in the watercolor class, which was of a collage, like this little tiny card that I had that was basically a bunch of pictures that were taped and glued together. Um, and I converted it to a big painting. Yeah, so I made sure to include all the details that I could on that. Um, hence all of the metallic objects in the water droplets and things of that nature. So, and right over here we have the monotype that I had done. That was also uh, three layers of different colors. Started out with the yellow, which was the lighter areas, the reds, which were the mid-tones, and the blues, which were the shadows. And with all of these layers coming together, you kind of get these dark spots and of course with the yellow showing through then you kind of get these lighter areas like here on the top of the dog's head and onto these uh, pants like this cloth material here and that's heavily reflected on the background as well and so right here this was another sculpture that I had made in Professor Moss's class uh, what I did was took a bunch of scrap wood and over quarantine, the very beginning of COVID, I put all that together with nails and wood boards, um, also some plywood, as well as a found object, which is this here clock uh, that I had basically turned to make a giant watch. Yeah, so. You might mention that that was in the collegiate show at Palmer Stockton College and took an award. That's right. Yeah. I think that experience was rather strange because I had to use just random materials that I had at the time because it was in the middle of the quarantine period, so didn't have a whole lot of options, but I had enough to do that. And over here we have a silver tone uh, printed picture that I have. Made that in a dark room more recently. Uh, yeah, that's of my dog that I had. It was a gift to my mother, actually. 
that I'm giving to her. And right here we have the watercolor painting of a, uh, I believe they called it a red dahlia. It's a into that. It was just immaculate and just wonderful. Uh, and you see here, this is a more abstract piece, a little less realistic um, compared to the other, but it has its own unique qualities. And yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing to it. Uh, and over here, we have some examples of my photography. Uh, these were actually taken along the river at the, I believe it was Lock and Dam 22. Yeah, it was in the middle of February, I do believe. The whole river section down there was frozen, lots and lots of ice, and it was unbelievable. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot that these pictures really do for its justice because of how amazing that that whole place looked. Uh, but it was worth it was worth showing uh, these nice little details here. And this was the chalk pastel that I referred to um, that was in a callback in that previous 3D, uh, the Deny the Cube project. So I believe I had made that like just at the beginning portion of my first semester here um, using chalk pastel. And that was like a replication of what I can really remember of Michigan. There was this special area that we went to that was really neat. Lots of water holes and nice little river area. Sorry, I think I touched that. Um, and then we have another print here. This would be a... I can't remember what they called it. Oh yeah, dry point print. And that would be the Hornet picture that I had made. And the neat thing about that is I basically to do these dry point prints you have to like carve into these um, I want to say it's some kind of uh, plastic this plastic kind of plate and essentially you just make that entire image by just carving into that you roll paint paint or ink over top of it and you could smash it onto the paper inside of the press and that would result in an image like this over here, this is kind of a more abstract watercolor painting that I had done uh, this semester. And I think that was a pretty good thing that I had made. It's kind of resembling that uh, and the geometry of like crystals. You know, I kind of looked at a geode and thought that would be sort of cool to replicate into a painting. And so right here is one of my personal favorite. Uh, this is the drawing of my cat, Loki. 100% uh, graphite pencil, the whole entire picture. And that was something that went to the Illinois Student Ministries Fine Arts Festival um, and eventually won that. Came out with two merit awards and actually I made my way down to the uh, National Fine Arts Convention down in Orlando, Florida in 2019. So that one is my pride and joy. And right here we have a, another great example of some of my work. This was actually done within the first semester of my stay here at QU. Uh, this is a whole load of things that were mashed together uh, from that entire semester. You know, just talking about the push and pull of these colors, uh, how darker colors kind of recede further into the background and lighter colors can kind of come outward a little more. And the whole idea of this was to also use some line and kind of create this bulging effect here with this illusion in the background. And I overall just think that's an amazing piece. And of course, it's got to have some of my favorite colors in it. And over here, we have a, a like a multimedia painting that I had done. It's oil, acrylic, some watercolor, which 
which is mostly seen within the hands here. And that was also another thing that made it into that show that I had mentioned previously. Uh, yeah, made it to Orlando with that one as well. And I'm proud of that. Over here we have a woodcut portrait. Uh, it came out a little dark, so we got kind of like a more sinister looking portrait, I think. Uh, a lot of this heavier darkness area right underneath the brows and kind of accentuating the eyes. So I thought that would that made for an interesting dynamic and applied it to a woodcut print. So that made for a good one. And over here we have a chalk paint or not chalk, charcoal painting painting drawing that I had made also in my freshman year. And by doing that we were able to capture the motion of light and how it would kind of pass through like foggy atmospheres and kind of give this god ray sort of effect and over here this was something I made over the summer uh, this is an acrylic painting of tiger lilies uh, that I had seen in our yard and I thought those made for an excellent picture to replicate and yeah lots of Time and effort went through into all of these, and I can honestly say I'm proud to have been here and to have done all of this. And as for the whole show itself, all of these were arranged in a specific way, um, you know, kind of evenly dispersing the colors just to kind of give everything a more visual balance. And as far as the sizes go, you can see that through here. Um, you have like a smaller painting or, or smaller portrait here and then just a bigger picture right here. Yeah, so the overall, like the spacing, the coloring and everything, there was lots more that went into all of these as well as the arrangement here of the sculpture and some of the work that we have over there. Yeah, so I thought that would make very, very good presentation-worthy gallery talk. So. Hey. Yeah? Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with um, art galleries and shows and things like that, but um, I'm curious, <coughs> when does an artist start to sell their I noticed you have several that are listed for sale. Yes. Um, it, is that like a senior year thing after a gallery, or have um, you always done that? You know, I, I kind of started doing that after I was about like a freshman. Okay. Um, I had run like amateur kind of things before then, like when I was in high school. Like somebody's like, oh, hey, draw me this character or something. Mm -hmm. You know, give me $20 for that, and I'll, I'll draw it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that eventually evolved into all of this. Uh, I started taking commissions, actually, okay. last year. Had a few logo designs done uh, for a few local businesses and also a big family portrait that I had made for uh, a relative of mine. So. And then uh, my second question is, how do you decide what you, I mean, what's your process of deciding what to put out? I pick and choose things depending on sentimental value. Obviously there are certain things that I cannot or will not sell because they've been something that I've either liked too much or you know never really had the intention of selling. Uh, and overall the, the more of this stuff that I could get out there the better uh, to me because that just means that there's so much more things that I have and I've done that people could Oh wow. <laughs> oh man, my truck's sitting on that. Yeah. But what was the question? No, Sorry, I was distracted. No you, I, no, you absolutely answered it. Yeah. You seem to have a wide variety of skills and talents in each of the areas and, and pieces that you have done, each of the mediums. Do you have a favorite and a least favorite? Well, uh, thanks for the compliment there. But, uh, you know, I don't 
necessarily know if I have a favorite over the, all of these. I mean, if I were to pick one, uh, I'd say I like to do a lot of oil painting and acrylic paintings. Uh, more recently, of course, watercolor. I mean, I never really had used that all too much until, well, recently, like in the last few months. So, yeah, it was pretty nice to have been able to get all that experience that I could. Uh, and, of course, over here we have some of my graphic design things, and that's also a big portion of what I do. Um, kind of a majority of it, and I like to pair uh, both of those kinds of things to make illustrations and things that you would see down in here. Yes? I think your, your uh, graphic pencil of Loki yeah. really demonstrates so much of your pure talent. Because, Thank you. You know, it's not just color, it's, it's a single media, it's a single color. And of course, you have a wonderful uh, subject in there, too. And then you can see the kinsmanship between Loki and yourself. Yeah. It's expressed in, in, the, in the artwork, too. So it's yeah. certainly one of my favorites, but I can see why you like the... All right. Thank you for coming and seeing all this stuff. That was great. Uh, so now what? <laughs>